Graham Stewart Dillon is a monster, a coward who abused the women who loved him, then took the life of his nine-year-old son, Braden. Neighbours, his children's teachers, even police knew he was a violent man, but nothing could protect little Braden. I honestly didn't think that he would take a child's life. I thought he'd take either mine or Tay's. I will come to you next. I promise you on that about you guys, I will come to you next. If they had have looked into the fact that I'd had that many domestic violence calls out, that I had a domestic violence order against this man, we would still have Brayden. I've got a baseball bat here for anyone that turns up, mate. My name is Graham Dillon. Graham Dillon and I am coming for you. It could be all happy and cheery one minute and then you're laying on the floor unconscious the next. Rachel Jones once represented our country in weightlifting. Today, she's a broken woman. I've spent my whole life, you don't talk. You're not allowed to say anything. So to actually try and talk now, the words just don't come because it's embedded in your head. You're not allowed to talk. Rachel met Graham Dillon in her early 20s. Training for the Commonwealth Games, she fell pregnant. Her career and life as she knew it would never be the same. Being in a car was horrible. That's where uh, the violence would start. I quickly learned not to wear sandals, to wear shoes, because you would quite often have to jump out of a moving vehicle to get away from him. I was held up against the wall and strangled out, um, bashed. I was bashed while I was pregnant. There's more than that. You can trust me on that, you f***ing You have no idea. You are the stupidest f***ing I've ever met. You're playing with someone that you don't want to play with. Tayana Matheson was just 14 years old when she met Graham Dillon at their local church. At this point, 28-year-old Dylan had left Rachel, his kids and his life in Tasmania behind, eventually moving to Canberra. Tiana says she was taken advantage of. You just couldn't leave, like, the things he would say, the things he would do. There was no running away. It was just, you stay there or you die, or someone you love dies because you try and run away. Tiana had three children with Dylan. I realised it was too dangerous for my kids. I recorded every conversation with him because I thought, no, I can't do this anymore. Like, you're not safe. No one should be with you. I'm not yeah, taunting you. I get a knife or the gun that's in there and I'll visit everyone. Like, what are you doing with <laughs> um, firearms and stuff? You don't know anyway. what my plans, mate. Why the kids are in there? Mate. What if one of them grabbed a hold of it? <laughs> I went straight to court. I told them everything. I told my legal aid solicitor that no child was safe with him, my kids weren't safe, that something needed to be done. Those recordings were handed to police and eventually used as evidence in Tayana's case against Dylan. But despite Tayana's best efforts to raise the alarm, in July 2013, Rachel's children moved in with Dylan. He took out a domestic violence order prohibiting Rachel from approaching the children. He was meant to have them on holiday and never returned them. You knew something wasn't right? Yes. I think as a mother, when you become so close to your children, even though they're not with you, you can feel. I would wake up in the middle of the night screaming, don't touch them, don't hurt them. From December 2014 to February 2016, Dylan violently assaulted his son Brayden and another child we can't identify for legal reasons. What did he do to them? Um, he would punch them in the face, in the stomach. He would kick them. There was punches to the head. They were turning up to the schools with these injuries. The police would be called. The children would say that it was done by an accident or they fell off their bike, and that was all that was done. In February 2016, Graham Dillon killed his nine-year-old son, Brayden. Brayden was abused for years in the lead up to his death. He was threatened with weapons, thrown against walls, and burnt with cigarettes. 
On the day of the murder, Dylan kicked and hit his son in the face, knocking him unconscious. But instead of calling an ambulance, Dylan locked Brayden in his bedroom and went about his business, even taking photos of shoes he owned in the hope of selling them online. He Googled, what does it mean if someone is knocked out and how do you get them up? He spoke to and texted acquaintances, but never mentioned Brayden. He continued to take photos of his shoes before heading to the supermarket, where he purchased orange juice and ice cream. Later that night, the other child called triple zero. Brayden was dead. Dylan was arrested. Brayden was the apple of my eye. He was mummy's little boy. What is life like without Brayden? Unbearable. I just struggle to go on. Do you want to have a break? Yes. Yeah. Had an argument with my kids and did something I never thought I would. Didn't do it willingly or knowing or thought it would happen that to murder him. Hitting my son and it caused him to die. I take responsibility for it, mate. I knew he was capable of murder. Slapped Braden at least four or five times in the head. Then I went to get a belt. Oh, he obviously passed away from my actions. There's no comprehending the abuse Dylan inflicted on Braden. The harrowing stories of these brave women have brought them together. And together, their fight continues. If they had have looked into the fact that I'd had that many domestic violence calls out, that I had a domestic violence order against this man, that he wasn't allowed near the kids that we shared together, all the reports that were put in, all the concerns that Rachel had of her own for her children, if anyone had have listened and put it all together, we would still have Brayden. In June this year, Graham Dillon was sentenced to 41 years jail for his son's murder and the brutal beatings to the boy and to other family. I tried as much as I could do. Rachel says she's since travelled to Canberra to meet with the Chief Magistrate in hopes of launching an inquest into the circumstances that led to Braden's death. You broke me, irreversibly. I will never be the person I was before I met you. I will never trust without hesitation or love deeply. You have damaged me from the inside out. Tayana and Rachel are tormented by their memories. How do I explain to your children in 10 or 15 years time what you have done? I find strength now because you made me so weak and fragile. But Brayden lives on in all their hearts. He's still a part of our family, even though he's not here with us every day. He's going to be one of the strongest members of our family always. Yeah. He's our hero. He died really to save us. Dylan will be eligible for parole in 2048 when he is 69. If you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, there is help available at whiteribbon.org.au.